I'll now introduce you to a few reduction reactions featured in section 16.1. Before beginning, I should remind you that one way to quickly spot a reduction reaction in organic chemistry is to see if a molecule has gained bonds to hydrogen. If it has, then we can usually say that the molecule has been reduced. Hence, if a particular reaction hydrogenates a molecule, that is, if it places hydrogen atoms on a molecule, you will often hear me say that the molecule has been reduced. In our first reaction, you'll see that we can treat a nitrile, such as benzonitrile, shown here, with hydrogen gas and a special catalyst called rainy nickel. This completely hydrogenates or reduces the triple bond to give us benzylamine. By comparison, we can also reduce the nitro group in nitrobenzene to an NH2 using hydrogen gas and palladium. This compound, you might remember from chapter 15, is called aniline. A very important use for aniline is to treat it with sodium nitrite, NaNO2, and HCl. This converts it to benzene diazonium chloride shown here. The mechanism of this reaction, which I won't cover here, is addressed in your text. More importantly, you should be asking, Mike, why would I ever want to make benzene diazonium chloride? The reason is because you can convert it into a lot of different substituted benzenes shown here. For example, if I take benzene diazonium chloride, shown here, and treat it with copper bromide, I can convert it into bromobenzene. In contrast, I can treat diazonium, uh, benzene diazonium chloride with copper chloride and convert it into chlorobenzene, shown here. I can also take benzene diazonium chloride and treat it with copper cyanide, shown here, and get phenylacetonitrile. This compound, phenylacetonitrile, is not accessible directly in one step from benzene itself. In other words, you can't directly take benzene and do a substitution reaction to put a C triple N onto it. So how in the world do you get a C triple N on benzene? You have to go through this sequence. That is, you have to take benzene, put an NO2 on it, then take that product, nitrobenzene, and convert it to aniline, shown here. Then take aniline, treat it with sodium nitrite and HCl to convert it to benzene diazonium chloride, and then treat that with copper cyanide. The cyanide then replaces the uh, diazonium group to give you uh, phenylacetonitrile, shown here. There are other products that you can make from benzene diazonium chloride that you cannot make directly from benzene. Here is an example. If we treat benzene diazonium chloride with potassium iodide, we can make iodobenzene, shown here. Separately, we can treat benzene diazonium chloride with acid to access phenol, shown here. Now, you show me a way of directly accessing phenol from benzene. Can you? No, you can't. That's the reason why we have to use this diazonium salt as an intermediate. We can also form fluorobenzene from diazonium chloride, but we have to first of all can replace the chloride with an alternate counter ion. So we react di benzene diazonium chloride with HBF4, and we can replace the chloride counter ion with BF4 minus. If we then take this intermediate and treat it with HCl, it will replace the diazonium moiety with a fluorine. That is the way that we access fluorobenzene. These reactions with copper salts, by the way, are called Sandmeyer reactions. I really don't care if you remember that name, but for some reason when I think about it, it reminds me of Andy Samberg from Saturday Night Live, whom I think is very funny. I now want you to pause for a moment and write down and consider these reactions before we go on to the next topic. I now wish to remind you of the five aromatic substitution reactions I taught you in chapter 15. 
These are collectively known as electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. The first, halogenation, occurs when we treat benzene with chlorine or bromine and a complementary iron catalyst. The second and third, nitration and sulfonation, transpire as indicated here. The next reaction is the Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction, where an alkyl group is placed on the benzene by reacting it with an alkyl chloride and uh, tri uh, aluminum trichloride catalyst. Friedel-Crafts acylation is similar, except that it places an acyl group on our benzene ring. For any of you who wish to review these reactions or their mechanisms, please consult our posted material for Chapter 15. I now have to teach you one more thing that might seem a little tangential. That is the definition of three words, ortho, meta, and para. You see, if you have two substituents on a benzene ring that are attached to carbons that are immediately adjacent to each other, as we see here, then we say that those substituents are ortho to each other. So in other words, I've got a substituent on carbon one and another substituent on carbon two, these two substituents are in an ortho relationship to each other. In contrast, if you have two substituents that are in a 1-3 relationship, as shown here, then they are meta to each other. And lastly, if they are in a 1-4 relationship, then they are para to each other. Thus, we could call these compounds shown here orthodichlorobenzene, because the two chlorines are ortho to each other, metadimethylbenzene, because the two methyls are meta to each other, and paradichloro, or parachlorobenzaldehyde, because the two substituents are para to each other. This now provides the necessary background for us to begin addressing a very significant question. What if I do an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction on a ring that already has a substituent on it? Let's say, for example, that I have a substituted benzene ring here, and I run a nitration reaction on it. Where does the NO2 end up? Does it en end up ortho, meta, or para to the initial substituent? The answer to that question simply is, it depends on what the first substituent is. I'll now teach you how to categorize different substituents and use them to predict exactly where new ones will go. Generically speaking, substituents that donate electron density into the ring are ortho-para directors. Substituents that suck electron density out of the ring are meta-directors. Here's a list of several meta-directors. You'll notice that they all have one thing in common. They suck. To be more specific, every one of these, except for NR3+, has an atom, either a carbon, a nitrogen, or a sulfur, that's doubly or triply bonded to another atom that's more electronegative. I'll now say that again. Meta directors, except for NR3+, have an atom coming off, directly off of the benzene ring that's doubly or triply bonded to another atom that's more electronegative. Now let's look at each of these and make sure that what I just said isn't a lie. You'll see that here we have NO2. Now if I actually draw out NO2, it's got a nitrogen that's doubly bonded to one oxygen and singly bonded to another. So if an NO2 is coming off of a benzene ring, I have an atom that's doubly bonded to an, another atom that's more electronegative than itself. So that applies. Let's look at this SO3H. In this case, I've got a sulfur that's doubly bonded to one oxygen, doubly bonded to another oxygen, and singly bonded to an OH. So if I have an SO3H coming off of a benzene ring, I've got an atom that's doubly bonded to two other atoms that are more electronegative than itself. Let's look at this CNN. If a C-triple-N is coming directly off of a benzene ring, I've got an atom, carbon, that's triply bonded to an atom, nitrogen, that's more electronegative than itself. In all of these examples, except for NR3+, I've got a carbon atom that's doubly bonded to an oxygen atom, which is more electronegative than itself. So once again, this is what meta-directors look like. 
They are atoms immediately bonded to your benzene ring that are either doubly or triply bonded to other atoms that are more electronegative than themselves. The one exception is NR3+, where R can be any alkyl groups or hydrogens. Let's now look at ortho para directors to compare. You'll see that they also have common characteristics uh, with each other. Ortho para directors, in fact, fall into one of two categories. Category one is alkyl groups. So if you have a benzene ring that has a boring carbon chain dangling off of it, which is considered an alkyl group, or a benzene ring, uh, another benzene ring coming off of it, which is considered an aryl group. So these two groups that are carbons and hydrogens dangling off of it, those are ortho para directors of category one. All of the other ortho para directors, including these halogens and all these oxygens and nitrogens, are in a different category. They all have atoms immediately stuck to a benzene ring that have at least one lone pair of electrons on them. So once again, I want to say that again. Ortho para directors fall into one of two categories. Either they're alkyl or aryl substituents, or they're atoms stuck immediately to the benzene ring that have at least one lone pair on them. I want you to pause right now and think about these descriptions for a few minutes so that they can really sink in before we go on to the next slide.